part C, x times y equals one. Believe it or not, that's a hyperbola. But it's, it's a rotated one. It doesn't open left or right, it opens diagonally. The good news is you can go back to techniques you're familiar with to graph this one, just solve it for y. It's really easy to solve for y. So if you have x times y equals one, how do you solve it for y? Yeah, just divide both sides by x, right? So you get y equals one over x, and that is a function, isn't it? This, this particular hyperbola is a function. In fact, it's a rational function. But it also turns out to be a hyperbola. So it's, it's both. Anyway, if it's a function, can't we just plot points? You know, go back to the old technique of creating a table. So x versus y, you bet. Now this is the simplest rational function you can ever think of. It's, it's called the reciprocal function. Whatever value you plug in for x, you're just gonna flip it to get the y value, right? So what would be some good values to plug in for x? Zero would be a terrible value to plug in. Does everybody see why? Yeah. Zero, you plug in zero, so let's do it. You plug in, let's do it kind of in the middle of my chart here. You plug in zero and you get one over zero? Undefined, right? Undefined. We'll use that symbolism for undefined. But you know what, it's not, it's not a bad suggestion in the sense that maybe we should plug in something less than zero, some things less than zero, and maybe some things bigger than zero, right? So let's try again. What would be some easy values to plug in? Negative two, how about negative one? Yeah, that would work. Uh, you know, even, you know what might be good to get close to the, a, the, the vertical asymptote, which is, whoops. The vertical, come on. <laughs> it won't let go. Let go, okay. So maybe get close to zero, which is, so x equals zero, which is the y-axis is gonna end up being a vertical asymptote because the graph will never cross that line. So maybe get close to that vertical asymptote, so maybe a good value would be negative 0.5. And then that kind of gives us a guide as to which positive values to plug in. How about positive 0.5, one and two? So let's start with the positive values. Um, and let's start from the bottom. If I plug in one into the equation y equals one over x, what do I get for y? If I plug in, I'm sorry, two I meant to say, for x, what do I get for y? One over two. It's the reciprocal function, you just flip it. If I plug in one, what's one over one? One. If I plug in 0.5, which is really one half, what am I gonna get? Two, right? Because you take the reciprocal of one half, you get two. So what do you end up with? Well, we know it goes through one, one. And we know it goes through two over two up one half. That's this point. And then we know it goes through one half, two. So you go over one half, it goes up two. Now, do you think it's ever gonna cross the y-axis? Well, I already told you the answer to that. Nah, it can't because x is zero there, right? Do you think it's ever gonna cross the x-axis? Nah, I can't think about it. One over x, if it crossed the x-axis, y would be equal zero. One over x, you can never divide anything into one and get zero. It ain't gonna happen. So when you draw this thing, it's, it's actually one branch of hyperbola. It's never gonna cross the x or y axis. In fact, those guys turn out to be the asymptotes. So x equals zero is the equation of the y axis. Y equals zero is the equation of the x axis. And these guys are the asymptotes. But there's a whole nother branch, right? The one, it's gonna be over here in the third quadrant because what happens when we plug in negative two into the reciprocal function? We flip it and we get negative one half. When we plug in negative one, we flip it 
reciprocal of negative one is negative one. What happens when we plug in negative 0.5, which is really negative one half? We flip it and get negative two. So we plot these points, it'll look much like this guy, except rotated 180 degrees, I guess. And we'll uh, plug in, uh, I'll do the negative one, negative one first. The negative uh, two, negative one half next. And then the negative one half, negative two. And when I draw it, I should draw it that it gets closer and closer to the x-axis as it goes to the left but never actually touches and gets closer and closer to the y-axis but never actually touches. And why I use two different colors, I don't know. So I'll change that guy to red. There we go. Okay. So graphing a reciprocal function, you just plot some points. And anytime you have a, a reciprocal function, whether, it, it, you know, in the homework you might get like y equals two over x or something like that, the x and y axes will always be the asymptotes, okay? Whether it's one over x or two over x or four over x or the opposite of four over x, you might have something like that in the homework. The, the asymptotes will remain the same. 